Legends, welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. Big episode today. We answer your questions. Yes, we put it out to the internet. What do you want to hear on today's episode? And we answer all those. We talk about dating life between myself and Braden. We talk about the football. And lastly, I'm on a hunt. Yes, dog the bounty hunter type style hunt for someone I met at the Taylor Swift concert. I need your help. I need your help out there. We're going to get into that and plenty more in this episode starting now. All right, Legends, we'll get into the podcast. This is all about you. All about you. Yes, we mentioned it in the very beginning of this. This is all your questions you sent through on socials. A massive thank you to everyone that was involved. Um, and it's going to be a good time. There's a lot of questions to get through here because of the fans. They had some stuff to say, Brighton, and they want to have answers. They want to have answers. But before we get into this, I have to introduce the man, the myth, the legend that is Brighton Cox. Welcome to the pod. Thanks for having me yet again, Mason Cox. But I do want to get into a bit about you because it is about mm. the fans, this one, but it would yep. be remiss of me not to ask about the Taylor Swift concert. Ooh, and, roll reverse. And mainly because I was probably one of maybe four or five people that didn't go to the Taylor Swift concert over the weekend. I just want to know a bit about it. Firstly, how was it? It was electric, absolutely electric. I was only there on Saturday night, and 96,000 people there for three nights in a row. Saturday night, I felt like that was the prime night, you know, like you know, Friday's a bit early, Sunday's a bit late, Saturday was the day, and it was just chaotic. Like, people were screaming everywhere, like, just everyone knew, everyone knew every single word to the song. I felt very old being there. <laughs> I think <laughs> the fact that so many bracelets everywhere. I think I had to check my dignity and my masculinity at the door of the MCG before I came in. And uh, it was awesome, though. It was so good. Just the energy and everything else. If you didn't know a single word to Taylor Swift songs, I think you still would have had an awesome time just because everyone was so excited and singing along and screaming. And you just you could just feel the happiness that was coming from the place on the day. Now, I know all the Swifties that are fans of The Mason Cox Show will be nodding along in agreement. but mm. for someone that hasn't been to a Taylor Swift concert, what's the, you know, besides her and her songs, yep. what's the appeal? Because, like, uh, for instance, Pink is up in Sydney, I think, and yep. she's flipping around on cables doing flips around Crazy. the whole stadium and stuff. What, what's Taylor Swift bring? She brings probably being the most uh, celebrity or most recognizable person in the world, I think, right now. Could you agree with that? Taylor yeah. Swift is the yeah. most popular person on the planet. I was thinking about that the other day. I couldn't think of someone that's like, you know, people, their default is like the Pope. Yeah. But a lot of people wouldn't know the Pope. I reckon more people would know Taylor Swift than who the president of the United States is. Yeah. I reckon yeah. She's, she just transcends, I think, generations. Because you look at like people like me are interested. You have the dads who watch NFL that now she's dating Travis Kelsey are now interested in her music because their daughters are now watching NFL and they want to be involved. And then you have the young generation that she kind of like almost caters to she with her music. She multi-genres. Because yeah. didn't she start in country? She started in country. Teardrops on my guitar, the OG. Oh, no. Back in the day. Oh, no. oh. You would have been at the couple of... Do you have blue light discos in America? Blue light discos? Yeah, so it's like the underage disco where they just play all the little teeny bopper music. And they, it's like where the boys are on one side and the girls are on the other. And you, <laughs> like you don't Sadie want to Hawkins dance in dance. the middle. <laughs> yeah, or, It's a kid's bop. You ever heard of kid's bop? No, I haven't no. heard of kid's okay, bop. Okay, it's essentially just... Yeah, we'll we got move the blue past light it. disco. Uh, no, I've never experienced one. I, don't, I think I'm maybe a bit too old by the sound of it. It's something that I did see that looked cool was that stage that she's on with the LEDs yeah. looking... Can you see that from there? Not from the ground. I couldn't see it. That yeah. was the one thing that sucked about being on the ground level was like you couldn't see the actual stage and all the different like light show that was going on that. But one cool part about it was everyone had the, the wristbands that had a light on it. The that wristies. was like The wristies. Yeah, yeah the wristies. Uh, but they had this thing and essentially you could see like during the reputation era. Oh, this is me really getting into this. <laughs> oh, um, I'm looking at Harrow on the deck. Yeah. <laughs> He's the, <laughs> he loves a good wristy. He's laughing at it. Oh, jeez. Uh, but there was, there was a thing where like all the wristbands made a snake in the stands. Yeah. And the snake kind of rolled through the MCG with everyone's wristbands, which was really cool. So I don't know how the technology works behind that, but <laughs> essentially, like, people's wristbands would light up if they were within the light show of the snake. Oh, that's and dope. it looked like a snake was, like, going through the crowd that's with cool. all the different lights lighting up. It was it was awesome. It was so cool. And um, there's so many good little parts to it. It's three and a half hours she performed. Yeah. Three and a half hours. That's a long time to be it, singing, running around, and dancing all at the same time. that's what tripped me out from social media. Um, I, it looked like it started like the sun was up mm -hmm. and then yep. it went all the way through to nighttime. I was like, 
Well, she does have like 50 albums to get through, doesn't she? Um, I think oh, she's got 10 errors, I think. Nine or 10 errors. So errors. it's quite a bit. Yeah. What era is Mason in? What era is Mason in? His favorite's Reputation. Um, uh, I think Mason's in quite a few of the mixed ever, eras. <laughs> let's go through the Mason's era. Do you, have you ever had a bad boy era? Have I ever had Bad Blood era, a red album? Um, no. I was making up new no. eras. Uh, no, I have. Probably college. I'd say college was yeah, like, nice. yeah, it was that era. Um, but no, it was it was an epic concert, man. It was so cool. I, I, I will say one thing about it, and I had three friends that were sitting next to me. Yeah. And I remember at one point they turned to me and they go, is this what it feels like to be on the MCG when it's full? And I said, yeah. Like, it's pretty <laughs> freaking amazing. Like, yeah. everyone's yelling and screaming. You can't hear your own thoughts. You can't talk to the person next to you because it's so loud. And then they said something about the crowd. They're like, oh, you always talk about the crowd. Like, it's amazing. But you hear the noise of them rather than see the individuals because it's so expansive, the MCG. It's a 100,000-seat stadium. Like you see the crowd, but you don't see individual individuals within the crowd. You just see them as one big kind of blob. Mm. Um, and they said like, oh, like I understand kind of exactly what you mean by that now because in the center of the MCG, these people are so far away from you. You only really see the people within like 100 meters of you. Yeah. And it was kind of a unique perspective for a lot of people that were down there on ground level that had never seen kind of that experience at the MCG. You did have more people on the grand final day, didn't you? Yes, by 4,000. You suck it, Taylor. Really? See? Although she did do it for three days in a row. <laughs> like yeah, three times as many people. <laughs> Just whatever she wanted. Yeah, but uh, it was epic. It was awesome. Let's um, jump into the questions. So we put it out to uh, the Goggle Gang. Mm. Uh, get your questions in. We'll ask Mason. We'll get it uh, all done now. Because yep. what we're saying is from next week on, we're in the footy. We got yep. in North Melbourne, which has changed. Uh, we won't get into that. It was at <sighs> it Arden Street. <laughs> Looking forward to going down to Arden Street. Street. Um, <laughs> but now it's back at Collingwood in the epicenter of the <laughs> Melbourne, uh, the home of footy. Yep. Uh, but everyone flooded us with questions. Uh, so we've got a bit of, it'll be structured like football. Yeah. Dating. Ooh. A bit of dating advice. Huge. And then a bit of personal questions about you and, you it's, know, we'll It's about to go out. a little bit sideways in that middle section, I feel <laughs> like. So we're looking forward to that, Brayden. some good ones. We've got a hell of a lot of questions. So we will dive into it. And off the top, uh, in yep. the footy section, which Ruckman are you looking forward to taking on this year? And that's from Nick MB. Oh, man. Quite a few. I love the big games. So you love the the Draper Essendon. You love the Max Gone, Melbourne, uh, prelims and all that kind of stuff too. But the one I'm really excited about is round two, which is technically the third round. Um, or no, it's the second round. Round one. We're mixing all this up, right? <laughs> um, so round zero is JWS. Round one, which is round two really, is Sydney at the MCG. Right. Brody Grundy. We did a bit of training in the off season together. We talk a bit of trash on the field, you know. There's a bit of love and a bit of you know competition between us. And um, him being at a different club, uh, from all all accounts that I've talked to him, he's absolutely loving it up there. And it's gonna be it's gonna be funny to sit there and like I'm sure I'll get into him. And the Sydney boys will like get into me, and I'll be like, I know I'm way better than all of you. <laughs> get out of my face. Come on, man. <laughs> this oh. is all good fun between us. There's nothing to do with you. Yeah, uh, I find so it'll be a good one. That. Always just happens to like transpire is yeah. like there'll be a big trade and somehow they will always verse it their mm. old club round one or round two. Like it always comes back around. Obviously, Taylor Adams playing yeah, up at Sydney now. That center bounce whenever Tay Adams and Brody Grundy are going to be in there. Oh, before the balls even bounce, I'm going to be talking trash to both of them. It's going to be weird to see. <laughs> it's just like an all Collingwood center bounce. It's just yeah. like, uh, it's, it's going to be weird to see. But yeah, there's obviously a little, you know, uh, a little stuff, a little byplay that went on in the previous years with Nick Dacos, the tag, mm, yes, all of that stuff. Point. So it's going to be a juicy little matchup, that Sydney matchup. Yep. Now, this one from Jake, the collector. That's a the very, collector. an ominous name. Yep. Uh, what was your 2K time trial score? Uh, time. Time. Now, we're not. We're not meant to be talking about this because well, we all know. Yeah, that we can't talk about weights either. Hush, hush. Uh, yeah. but. Um, I will say we haven't done a 2K time trial in a while. I haven't done one in a few years, to be honest. Oh, because um, it makes you feel bad. Is well, that, I, I, this is the thing. Whenever Brody Grundy was at the, the club, right, he was always last, which yeah. made me kind of not look like such a slow ass. Yeah. Um, but whenever he left, it really made me look bad. You were <laughs> so at the front with the picket people sign. People really were focusing on me and how what my time was rather than where Brody was at. So, um, yeah, no, I think the my best I've ever had was like 645. Which is I crazy. ran a 2K time trial I whenever I first that. came here. I was like, I was about seven to ten kilos lighter. I, I gained seven kilos in two months. 
after I ran that. So I was like quite light and then went to the weight room and got properly, um, yeah, fitted out with weights and stuff. So did that. And then my 2K time trial went from like 6.45 to like 7.10. And that's probably where I'm at now, like 7.10, 7.15. So it's not quick for like an AFL player, but... I think for the tallest guy in the league, you know, I'm, I'm all right. You know, hey, it's, it's acceptable, right? It's pretty hard moving 135 kilos around that big track. Now let's jump into the next question. If you could give a pair of your goggles to someone, who would it be? Dude, that is a great question. Anyone. Uh, throughout footy history? Anyone. Any person, I reckon. I'm going to stick to footy, and I'm going to go with a guy that I think is one of the best looks the AFL has ever seen. I'll, I'll do two people. Kappa. Oh, yeah. He'd be hilarious. In He'd him. rock him. And then the best one, I think, G-Train. Can you imagine G-Train rolling around St. Kill, just beating the living shit out of people <laughs> left, right, and center yeah. with the full, like, bald head, just mullet and goggles on, just living it. Yeah, because I feel like he's made for a set of, like, servo sunnies. Yes. Like, that's exactly what I wear. Like the speed <laughs> dealers. Get them in. Uh, so Fraser Garrick, the G-Train. G-Train, two, two. Yeah, I, I don't mind that one. Now... <laughs> What are you most looking forward to this year? Now, and this is a nice mm. little one. Is, uh, okay, we'll do in and out of footy. Um, in footy, I'm really looking forward to gather round. Mm. I didn't get to experience that last year because I had this spleen injury that almost killed me. Um, so just casually put that excuses. in there. Uh, excuses. Uh, so I didn't do gather round. So I, I heard really good things about it, and it, was, it seemed like a really cool event and like kind of the way Adelaide got together for it and everything else. You couldn't even gather. Um, you couldn't even get on the plane and go over. We watched it in the back of the van in the drive. Yeah, we did. That was our live show. That was sick. That was, that was actually good fun too. Right. Um, but, yeah, we always played Adelaide Oval. Um, but the fact that everyone comes to South Australia and kind of the promotion for it, I think it's a really cool idea that's different. Mm. Kind of reminds me of whenever um, Anzac Day came into the, uh, the schedule and people were like, oh, I don't know about it, don't know about it. And then it became such a staple every single year. So I think there's a bit of symmetry along that. And I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked to kind of see how it all looks and pans out, you know. I, I didn't get that experience last year. And then this year with it, having a year of experience, you'll be able to kind of, I think, uh, have it even better, bigger and better this year. So I'll say that outside of football and then um, – uh, sorry, in football and then outside of it, um, also in Adelaide. Big – South Australia guy this year. Maybe you um, hook up with South Australia Tourism, get some of the Hey, some of shut the ching that ching. out. Someone tag him, please. Um, the other thing is in uh, Adelaide, Live Golf is coming over to Adelaide, and we fortunately have like three or four days off the same weekend that Live Golf is there. So I'm flying over with a bunch of mates. We're going to do a bit of golfing and going to see that and then um, see Cam Smith at home and see that uh, the the par three, hopefully we'll see a hole-in-one there and everyone go absolutely nuts like Waste Management Open and just lose their freaking mind. You'll be um, sipping on tea, but uh, being responsible, I'm sure. Of course, Brayden. Nothing else. <laughs> Nothing else. Uh, that one was from Tweedalese. Uh, now the next question from <laughs> Dan Walker. <laughs> uh, ruck or forward this year? What are you going to oh, be playing? Man. This is um, something I want to know. There's a lot of people asking this. Um, I'll probably play mostly ruck, I'd say. And then depending on uh, what happens with our forward line staff and uh, necessities of different players and styles of – the team we're playing against probably less forward. So it's kind of similar to last year, right? Like I was first like Ruckman primarily and then uh, secondary was a, was a forward. So I think it would be somewhere around there. Um, obviously with Dan McStay going down, that's one less tall on the team. So it might mean I have to play a bit more forward this year. Uh, but well, I've said it before, I'm just happy to be playing and wherever they need me, I'll just jump in and try to fill that, that role. But uh, I'm a cross ball. So whatever kind of, you know, is ne- needed by the club, I'm happy to do it and, um, hopefully kick a few snags this year. Hey, playing Ford's definitely better than playing at Williamstown. Uh, <laughs> do you plan on being... That's a very subtle dig, Brayden. <laughs> That's why I try to move on real quick. Yeah, real really. to the next one. Eh? Uh, do you plan on being a one-club player? That's from Itzy Muir. Um, well, I've got a year after this year. I've got, so i got a two-year contract. So I've got this year and next year. And what are you, like 36, um, 37? I'll be 33 March 14. Don't need to put that in there. You can take that up, Brayden. Um... I'm getting older, uh, but yeah, it, probably, it just depends on the club. Like, I'd love to be a one-club player. I think everyone, you know, strives to do that. But at the end of the day, kind of the decision is made by the club whether or not they want you. Fair. Uh, so if you get to the end of your contract and essentially the club doesn't give you a contract, like, you know, and then someone else is offering you a job, I think it'd be pretty silly just not to take it. So, you know, um, one of those guys, you know, with Pendles, where they say, oh, he's been, you know, club legend. He gets to make the decision. He gets to call time and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't think that's me. <laughs> <laughs> they come to you and they're like, all right, it's time to wrap it up. And you're like, 
No, I think I'll go nah. around again. <laughs> like, oh, well, here's five cents. Enjoy. <laughs> uh, if you could be any player in the AFL, who would you be? I like who that Who would one. I be in AFL history? Um, Do one that's current and one oh, past player. Oh, man. What's your one? AFL history knowledge? Dude, one guy I love in the AFL just because of his personality and like him just as a human is Jeremy Cameron. Mm. He just seems like he has full just <laughs> – it seems like whenever he plays – there's no rules for him. Yeah. Like the coach just goes, oh, just kick goals. Go figure out how to get the pill. Go figure out how to you know, score goals. Do whatever you want. You're good enough just to like essentially give you free reign to enjoy yourself, right? Yeah. And I'm very jealous of that because sometimes, you know, as a ruckman, it's very structured and you have to be in certain places at certain times and, you know, stoppages and all that where it seems like he just rolls around the field. You'll see him in back 50 taking a mark. Next thing you know, two seconds later, you'll see him, you know, in forward 50 taking a, a clunk inside the square. So, He's one of those I I love, and also his antics away from the field seems yeah. like he just really enjoys life. Got a beautiful nice. family now. Down on uh, the coast. He's got the farm, living on the coast. He seems like he just has a, a really good life. I love and the so fact that like I couldn't think of one other player in the entire AFL. Mm. Remember like earlier last year, he was playing on the wing, had 30 touches, kicked yeah. four. Just why not? <laughs> That's just taking the piss. It's like That's your full forward. <laughs> everyone out there <laughs> just, is just trying hard to get the uh, ball, and he's had 30 and kick four. Between him and Blitzabs, it's like those two just kind of go do what they want. Yeah. <laughs> like Blitzabs like, oh, uh, yeah, I play every position. I could play you know wing one day. I could play literally Ruckman and then yeah. Backman and then forward all within the same game. Well, that's <laughs> like when you just... like talk about Blitzabs 2K time trial. He's like, oh, yeah, I knocked that out in like four minutes. Yeah, he's just casually <laughs> trotting around. Mate, like, I could uh, sprint down a hill, and I wouldn't hit four. Four minutes for 1K. He's he's probably the best all-around athlete in the AFL yeah. over the last – maybe maybe ever, I don't know. Jim Stines is up there, the best athlete ever. But Mark Blitzovs, he is one of those people that just does everything. And yeah. there's very few of those you ever see come through the AFL. So credit to him. Big big fan of the 46. You know what would annoy me if I was a player and you get those blokes that are like quick as but have mm. tanks? Yes. It's like you're meant to get one or the other. Yeah. You, you don't have everything. You don't get both. No. Nah. <laughs> like – like, yeah, you, know, you would love both. I would love both, but unfortunately I don't have either. <laughs> yeah, because there's meant to be rules to this thing. <laughs> there's physical limitations in the world, right? What about and a pass player? Pass player? Um, well, I don't know a lot of pass players. Capo seems like a, a good one, like we mentioned earlier. But one that I think would be kind of cool, and people talk about, I think he had like a, a music album, Peter McKenna. Yeah. Is that? Did he actually yeah, have he, a music album? He had like a, like, he was in the charts. He just seemed like a bit of a superstar back in the yeah. day. Eh? Like yeah. he just could... Do whatever the hell he wanted to, and people just like loved him. Like 140 he kicked like forty snags a year, and he's yeah. out there playing music. It's like leave some ladies for the rest of us, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Macca, Jesus. I reckon he would have gone pretty well back in the day. I feel like that's the same as the bloke that's got the tank and he can run fast. It's like he can play footy and he's a musician. Or just romantic and good looking as Mate, hell. <laughs> probably he's probably packing too. Jeez. Macca, calm down, man. <laughs> oh, I don't need to know that. Uh, <laughs> hey, well, if, you, the next if you're picking him, you want to. <laughs> yeah. uh, this one is from Cater Hut. Uh, yep. What's your favorite away ground to play at? Now, I, you probably don't even have to answer this because we know it's Marvel Stadium. Uh, we'll move on to. <laughs> was it not Marvel? Uh, is that what it's called? Eddie had Marvel. <laughs> it's been the name six different things while I've been here. Um, no, MCG, obviously, number one. I think everyone's pretty— That's, pretty, away, that's a home. That's pretty a home locked ground. in, I'd say, on that. But it, away ground, um, oh, geez, Adelaide Oval's a vibe. It's nice, isn't it's, it? It's cool. Every time you play there, like, Adelaide and Port Adelaide have crazy it's fan bases. Character. They're very, like, you know, into it. Yeah. Um, so it adds, like, quite a bit of experience and emotion to it. What's the abuse there, like? Good? Oh, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's decent abuse. Good yeah, abuse, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, I've, yeah, yeah, I've copped a bit at Adelaide Oval. I feel like... Like, for sure, Like, for the sure. abuse there is top-notch. But I reckon, like... Yeah. Sydney's oh, actually pretty bad, really? too. Yeah, yeah. I feel like they're SCG. a bit... Ooh, like... Nah, not, not towards the bench. <laughs> really? <laughs> not, not near that bench. Oh, man, I remember the prelim a couple of years ago. There was people just absolutely going out. It's like, I was injured at halftime. People were still going at me. I wasn't even playing. Yeah. <laughs> it was like I was done for the day. What was the old... um? The old Perth over was it the Wacker or whatever out there before the Optus Stadium, like the old yeah Wacker. Uh, uh, no, there's another one. Something, but yeah, like they I played were, there. I don't remember. There, there was some abuse there. There was some yeah. like yeah, I like some of those. The but South and West, they, they the Adelaide Oval is a little bit smaller too, so it's less running for the big fellas. Yeah, more contests and stuff rather than you know running back and it forth. It just looks so nice at nighttime too. Yeah, the hill. I want to at one point in my life. 
go up on the hill. Maybe chuck some chalky milk. I hear that's a thing. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, I want to go up on the hill and just like sit there and watch a game. I think it's just kind of like a cool mix between like local and professional footy. Yeah. And I don't know how long that's going to be there because there's obviously, you know, they're going to probably have to extend out at some point and that's probably going to be the first place that goes. Yeah. Uh, but it is got it does have a bit of history to it and it's the fans are really listing. hyped and like they get really into the game. So I think Adelaide Oval's number two on the list. Do you think probably sadly you'll just never be able to go to the footy ever and experience like an, a normal day? Um, I think I can. I think like full like where have you seen my headband more and the you cowboy can't hat? Hide. I reckon the headband more, cowboy hat, roll in. I did see this at the Taylor Swift concert, though. There was a guy, you ever, like, put, like, a bed sheet over here and put, like, the holes in your eyes? Yeah. Yeah, some like guy dressed up as that, like a ghost, yeah, because it's part of one of her music videos. And I was like, if I did that, I think I could get away with it. And then also, beyond the valley, whenever we were there, people were wearing the scarves, where they were, like, the handkerchief things, scarves, yeah. You know? Yeah. I was like, maybe that would work. Full balaclava. <laughs> Full balaclava and grills. <laughs> no one even Ooh. know who you are. Uh, and you haven't played in the China ground. I thought that was a pretty no, unique the, one. Yes. Have you played uh, in Darwin? Haven't played in Darwin, no. I, I, I would love to play in Alice. the NT. Alice would be awesome. That would yeah. be such a cool experience. It's I'd love to play in Darwin too. The rough thing is list. that your club's so big. The downside yeah. of it is you don't get to play at those smaller boutiques because yeah. they want to make some of the cash. Yeah, but it's. I think it would be awesome. I love that they go out there and play. I'd love to see an NT football team. Yeah. Um, I know we've got Tasmania, or I think we do. I, I don't even know. What's going on? Do they got a, they got a stadium or what? What are they doing down there? Oh, they're waiting on the um, election. Oh, which, geez, which Because one's for – the stadium and one's against. Is that the one thing that the whole <laughs> whole of all Tasmania cares about? Not That's a it. lot of... It's uh, like, not what you, you know, your ethics and everything else behind it. It's like, do you want the stadium and Tasmania team or do you not? Not a lot happening. Is that what we're there. essentially voting for not if we vote happening. on a person? Uh, now, this one is if Mason were to be traded, this is a bit of a hypothetical from our boy Billy Turner. Remember yeah, last week? Yeah, yeah, Billy, uh, hypothetically, if you were to be traded, what yeah. team would you like to go to? Oh, man. Collingwood's like kick bricks, um, mate. Geez, the War Tars up in Northern Territory. That'd be fun. Give a new sport the a Tars, How baby. How cool would that be? The you War Tars. you could get a game in the NBL? Uh, maybe on the bench. <laughs> Hitting that water bottles. <laughs> Back to your roots. Um, no, I think I would probably... I'd probably want a different experience, right? You'd, you'd want to do something that's totally unique. Gold Coast. Obviously, yeah. I'd want to do like a Gold Coast maybe or like a Sydney and try to just kind of... Just see like kind of what football is up there. Although GWS, I will say this. I know like GWS is probably not the biggest fan of me at the moment, but yeah. um, they are pushing probably the U- United States initiative the most really? at the moment. They always kind of bring in the U.S. stuff and try to like play a game over there and stuff. So there's maybe an opportunity there to maybe try to get a game over there and be playing with the team that plays over there, which would be pretty cool. Because mm-hmm. like Collingwood, Let's be honest. We'll never play in the U.S. No. If they're not willing to play in the Northern Territory, they're not going to play overseas. Gold Coast played in China. Yeah. So, you play like Gold Coast and all that. I mean, like, can you imagine that China game? Like, No, I couldn't imagine like, breathing. I can't even fathom it now, like, what it would have looked like. It was very smoggy. Smoggy. Did anyone show up? Yeah, because they made them. They made them. <laughs> but they pay people to sit in the stands. Like you're going to watch this sport. So, the, the stadium was packed. They didn't know what to cheer, though. Are you serious? Was it actually? It was packed, yeah. Man, I remember someone sent a photo once uh, of the – this is the only memory I have of it. And it was like an NFL football was like on the banners trying to promote the AFL. And I was like, oh, close. No cigar. I wouldn't mind you going to the coasters. Up there with Took. Well, you know none of them are getting a million bucks. Mm. So you can be like, where's all this? You got all this cat room. I would be the guy who would like show up to training on a jet ski, I think. Yeah. (laughs) Just because I think their training grounds like right on the river. Yeah. Just have a – that's my only thing in my contract is I have to have a private park for my jet ski and I just wouldn't have a car. Don't mind it. (laughs) Uh, now we're jumping over to the dating segment because we've had a fair hey. bit of interest about this, and I thought to get a nice baseline, right? Yeah, okay, yep. Uh, it's Joy Jasmine wants to know: Are you single and are you dating? Ooh, um, how deep are we going to get into this dating segment? Well, this is just uh, the this very. Is an this is the tip. I am single. Yes, I'm open to dating. It's probably the best What's answer that to that. What's that caveat that you like? You make it sound weird. Is it weird? Are you to dating say that? or you're not? Yeah, dating? I mean, like I, don't, I haven't really had the time oh, so to be going to dating, on dating, but no one's asking to, to go on dates at the moment. But like, <laughs> I would be open to it. Yes. Nice. Okay, so now we've got that's that's, <laughs> that's out a great there. Start, right? I think, and everyone uh, knows my status. Yeah, so, he's single. Um, <laughs> the answer. Going to the Taylor Swift concert. Everyone yep. wants to know: Did you manage to find love in the Taylor Swift crowd? 
So this is the story, right? So at the Taylor Swift concert, we made you know the wristbands before with the beads, That's and nice. my friends and I were like, "Oh, like well, we'll do a fun game. Everyone puts their social media handle on a bracelet, mm. and then we give the bracelets to our friends." And our friends have to pick someone out in the crowd that they think would be our type and give them the bracelet. Now, we had to make sure it was the right bracelets because we had about 20 or 30 on each arm, right? So we had to make sure we had designated a little area for the ones that were the try to, you know, I guess to give it out to your fr- for your friend. Is there an understanding you're but not stitching each other up? You're trying to it do was it, a, it was a, we're all desperately single. So yes, it was the understanding of we're not screwing each other over. Um and we got into the seats and we kind of was like kind of laughing about the whole scenario and we like kind of did like a 360 and I'm pretty sure there was like zero people that were under the age of uh or sorry over the age of 22 let's say right so let's just say our age bracket probably wasn't there so we got to the end of it and we walked out of the stadium we all looked at each other and we go did you give the wristband to anyone we all just go no <laughs> no 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 I don't think it would have been appropriate at the time to be able to do that um, so unfortunately, no, we didn't uh, didn't find love at the Taylor Swift. Bra. We did find community at the Taylor <laughs> Swift <laughs> at the Taylor Swift concert. So you we didn't find love though. You would have stood out for your height and just age. I yeah. felt so bad for the people like standing behind me. I caught that much shit whenever I rolled up. Did people say stuff? But what's that? Did people say stuff? Yes, and this you... is this is the thing I want to say. Okay, I should have said this off the top. I hope you clip this into something because. I met the people behind us, right? And they were the most lovely human beings. And I knew I essentially blocked their whole view for the whole concert. Expensive tickets. And I felt so bad. But I was in such an excited state <laughs> and so hyped for the like whole concert that I forgot to turn around. Because I, I remember whenever I sat down, I said, I want to make sure I offer this whenever we, you know, before we leave. I wanted to offer them tickets to a game to make up for the fact that I just probably made their Taylor Swift experience terrible. Uh, and I wanted to do that, but they were gone by the time I actually thought of it because I was, like, debriefing on just the amazing experience that just happened and then, like, turned around they were gone. So if anyone out there knows who was sitting behind me at the Taylor Swift concert, please sort it out and get in contact with me somehow or give me their socials or something. Um, and I'm going to try to sort out some tickets for them to a game this year at the MCG and get them some nice tickets, maybe change rooms or something, to try to make up for the fact that I probably ruined their whole Taylor Swift experience. That'll be, you know, detective esque. It's like, well, at least they've got one big beacon in the middle, which is you. To yeah. Be like, okay, let's look around this and then mm. find the people. But, but I'm just, I'm, I'm calling on the internet. I'm calling on the internet to make something nice happen. I don't know how this happens or how you find people. I don't. There's no phone books anymore. So if the internet can help us out to find these two to three or four people. I would really appreciate it. And it's actually a really nice gesture, I think. And they they were so nice on the day. So I kind of felt really bad. I love that. It's very kind. Hopefully they're footy supporters. Were they footy they supporters? They were football supporters, yeah. Because nice. the dad of the two behind me actually took a photo with me. Yeah, <laughs> and he nice. was like hyped though. I was standing in front of him. And I was like, you might be hyped. Your daughter's going to hate me forever. <laughs> I don't mind that. Have you told this story about hitting up this? Oh, yes. You, so uh, so you, you didn't find love. We were but, talking about this beforehand, but uh, Serena Carpenter, right? Yeah. Amazing musician. She opened up for Taylor Swift. Snack, as we would like to say. She's an absolute snack. I wouldn't say and, that. Well, she's beautiful, man. And, I, don't, um, I don't think I would ever call anyone a snack. You don't think so? Is that not a thing? I think she's snack. Maybe I should snack more snack. people. Snack. Um, anyway, so at Sunday's show, her very last show, she said something at the end of her song, which changed up the lyrics. And essentially, she said, um, along the lines of I might need a Melbourne man. Uh, so I thought, why not? Can't can't hurt. I'll just chuck a little DM. <laughs> do you reckon you would have been the only one? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> 96,000 people, whoever the male side of that, probably some of the female side too, yeah. would have probably slipped in the DMs there. Um, I can safely say that has not been seen. <laughs> <laughs> left on uh, left on unseen. Left on unseen. Mm. I, I feel like that's one of those ones where like a musician comes to your town, they're like, you know what? Melbourne's my favorite oh, town in the world. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. everyone's like, oh my God, oh my God, that's where I'm from. <laughs> Perth is my favorite town in the world. Yeah. Sydney is my favorite yeah. town. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, I need a Melbourne. Get man. them hyped. Get them hyped. Uh, now, jumping into the next one. Yeah, what do you got for us? Uh, Christopher Pemberton wants to know. Yeah. How bad is your riz? My riz? Yeah, your riz. What's a riz? Is that an outfit or something? You or? can't say you don't know what riz is. <laughs> You've got the internet. Are you the um, riz king? My riz. My riz is pretty dreadful, I'd say. Um, I See, this is the thing. I, and I feel like you're the same. I don't get out and about a lot. 
Yeah, I don't talk to anyone. And if I do, it's kind of a weird thing where, like, I don't know if someone's looking at me and going, that's that football player who's probably dumb as hell because he's a football player. Yeah. Or they're like, oh, he's, like, really tall. I wonder if he plays bad. There's, like, so many just, I don't know. I'm terrible at it is essentially it. I would struggle to go up to a girl at a bar and just randomly start conversations. See, I this is very interesting to me. Uh, my follow-up question is yes. because we've heard, Australian males have heard, yeah. um, that in America all the men there are really forward and outgoing yeah. and ask for numbers and they're like, mm. so – have you changed since you you made your way across to Australia? I did become Australian, so I have to follow the rules. Um, yeah, no, I would say that's true. Depending on the the place you go to, but I think yeah, people are a bit. I'm a bit more cautious just because I I know like my job is a bit of a twenty four seven job, and mm-hmm. you have to keep the image of the club and stuff. And like, I don't like a lot of people having my number if I don't know them very well. So I think. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a weird one for me. I wouldn't probably hand my number out. Like I'd probably do like a social media thing and then like yeah. kind of get to know them and then you kind of get to the number from there. That's probably how the order of things that happen, you know, because um, I just wouldn't feel comfortable. I know like at one point I think like I get a lot of prank calls on my number um, and I just don't yeah. answer anything that's, um, that's unknown. Um, but at one point Fox Footy during the pandemic, uh, they put my iMessage – on on film like on live tv and that Ooh. night i was getting that many phone calls and facetimes and everything else and i had to call fox footy and be like what the hell dude like what are you doing like what what why but That's it wasn't rough. just me there was like four other people on it too so like oh. and you can't change your apple id mm. so you're locked in to just getting spam calls forever Oh, that's real rough. So frustrating. I remember um, Fox Footy were giving away tickets on 360, I think. Yeah, okay. And I took a photo of the tickets because I just held them up to the camera and I put them on my Twitter. Yeah. And they were like, please delete those tickets because, like, obviously it's got, like, the barcode, the seat, the name, the number, like, oh. everything on there. Um, and lucky I'm a good guy. I deleted yeah. it, but, you know. Come on, Fox Footy. You know, Fox Footy, yeah. You're going to be um, thinking about these things. Yeah, it was. I mean, that was like tough times of trying to like get things to work with tech during the pandemic. Everyone was like FaceTiming in and it was a whole thing. But yeah, it's. Uh, I don't answer anything that doesn't I doesn't have a name that's saved on my phone. Now, this one, I'm sure a lot of people uh, want to know, but Rocket Race sent this one in. Mm. Does Mason want a tall missus? Do you want, do you want another Bigfoot? Um, I don't discriminate. I really don't have an issue with height. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a weird one. People always think that I need to date someone that's like over six foot. But I will say this, right? If I walk into a joint and there's like any female, it's like you around six foot or over before. six foot, it is a full like stare down, lock down on you. What like if someone was bigger than you? What if someone walks in there like seven five? A female, it's like. Yeah. So I did date a person at some point in my life. I kind of date and was talking to. She was six foot six and she would wear six inch heels. And she was literally eye level with me. And that was a very weird feeling. Yeah. I will say that. So, um, yeah, I think, like, the, the beauty about myself, right, is, you know, if you're a short girl, you're a tall girl, like, you can wear as tall high heels you want. Doesn't uh, matter. You're not getting up this high. I didn't think you were going to – I thought you were going to say whether you're tall or short, like, you'll take anyone. Well, that's kind of what I'm getting at in a nice <laughs> way, Brayden. I, I think the same goes for you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> take anything. Uh <laughs> Have you ever been set up on a blind date? Uh, mm. If so, how do you prepare? That's from Itsy Muir. Uh, not technically a blind date. I would say like I never met the person before and you just kind of roll that's into a date, date, right? That's pretty much like, yeah, that's how people do it nowadays and like mm. apps and stuff. Um, but no, I've never been on like a blind date. Um, speed dating would be fun. We should do a speed dating thing. Uh, uh, but no, blind date, I think the biggest thing that I do on a date, right, is you kind of test your ability to hold conversation. Yeah. And you have certain things you, you just kind of stay away from. But I think the biggest thing is like whether or not your charismatic personality, personality comes through and you can like not have lulls in conversation. And if you do, it's like while you're eating, right? Like you're yeah. eating, you can kind of have a gap. But you um, you kind of want to make sure that you kind of keep the conversation going. You're both interested in each other and what they do. So um, you want to ask a lot of questions. But the thing is, if it's too many questions, she doesn't ask any back, that's also an issue. So it's oh. a bit of, you know, it's a bit of dancing, you know, dancing what? in a dark room, trying to figure out what's going on. It's like fencing mm. with the swords, not, oh, with, yes, not with the, the pickets. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> do you it's feel like people do you feel like uh, people are just trying to date you based on your job? I like that one. Um, I have had that experience, yeah. Yeah, I think there's a uh, well, it's on the apps uh, recently. Um not not super recently, but recently I was on them and there was one thing that was said on it that was very weird. And there was like um what was it? It was a girl that put something on her prompt and the prompt was um like what's your most irrational fear what's one of your biggest fears and she put like 2018 prelim mason cox and i was like and it was one of those things that like came up as she liked you and i was like i think i'm just gonna just x that one that's just she, <laughs> it's a bit too close for comfort she was trying <laughs> to face weird. her fears mace yeah no, she's being way too direct i'll, t- I'll tell you that braided but um yeah i have had people date me for i guess the job which i find weird because i never grew up with afl i probably don't have the same kind of like you know, association of a, a football player. Um, but probably not as much now. I think the older you get, the more people are like kind of comfortable with their own skin and the ones that you can pick them out pretty quickly, right? Mm. Uh, but you try to date people for who they are, not what they are. So do you try to find a non-football fan? Um, I don't think it's a big deal breaker for me, but if they were kind of like really interested in football, like, I would hope they're interested in football because they want to support me, not because they're like, a, like love the club. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> I feel like that'd be kind of weird. Rock up to the first date with a scarf and beanie. Yeah, that'd you're be, in trouble. That'd be a trouble. That'd be a red flag one on one. That's a that's what we call a deal breaker, Brady. Yeah, we'll start to um, bit of a like a what do they call a speed round? We want to get through yes, some of okay. these. Yep. Uh, speed dating. Speed so round. what are you looking for in a girl? Big um. <laughs> Personality. Big, yeah. Personality. Big personality. Right? Yep. Uh, why are men so <laughs> shit these days? Oh, I think there's too much access to too many people. I think we're just out here trying. Come on. I think it's just we all we have these apps, man, that just like you can just go by face value now. You don't actually need to know anyone. I'm a shocker. You know what I did the other day? Went on a date, went well. Yeah. Reciprocated. I said, you, did you go on a dating app on the date? No. Did you I'm actually pretty good at that. She goes to the bathroom, next thing you know, you're on like I delete going the apps it. going into the date because I don't want really? pop-ups. So I like... I think that's being a gentleman in 2024. That is being a gentleman, I think. Um, that's chivalry in we 2024. Both ag- <laughs> we both agreed on a, f- a second date. Yeah. And then we both just never got back to each other. Like we just. What? I don't know. I think that's dating on apps in a nutshell. It's you just, just found someone new. No, I just. I just. Didn't have time. Just got busy. Didn't reconnect. I think she got. And then we just. It just went into the ether. Go on. That happens so to like too many times. Really? Yeah, it's quite fucked up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, have choices. you experienced a good date yet? Because they all just seem like fails. That's from Michelle Edwards, and that's very My true. Dates? Yeah, they always just seem shit, man. Well, I mean, the shit stories are always the best stories, aren't they? <laughs> Common denominator, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we connect over that. But um, I've, I've had good dates, but I think sometimes you have a good date and you get along with them, and then, you know, about three or four dates in, you kind of go, okay, like, realistically, is this going to be something mm. long-term or not? You kind of get to that point, and then um, you make that decision. I haven't really found probably someone that I want to settle down with yet. Yeah, so, how many dates in before you're like, shit, I'm, I need to make a call here? Because I freak out. I do I do call? one date. I go like one date and I go like, yeah, I can I can see this going. One date and you have the what are we? No, no. I'm just thinking in my head because I'm not like, oh, I do four dates and then I decide and yeah, then okay. I've just wasted a whole lot of time I'm getting through them. Mm, trying to throw them, yeah. I'm, I mean, like date, sounds date bad. Two Let's or three. not use the word churn. I'm not churning through women. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, uh, hang on. That's I didn't say that. It's your words. The same woman. Yeah. Um, no, I think by the second or third date you should know. Yeah. You should definitely. Know. I think after two for sure. You two be, for sure. You should you know if you should known. pursue this or it's just going to be. Yeah. Fizzled. After one, you can go like, oh, like it wasn't. You know, it didn't blow my socks off, but it was good, like nice. She's nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think then you get a second chance and maybe try to do an activity date. Yeah. So you get more personality. Mm. You do coffee just to get, it's like a vetting system. Or, you know, that's where I'm at at the moment. I haven't had a drink in two months. And if Huge, I did, I'd wow. have a Han because, ooh, they're good. Big fan of Han. Um, but <laughs> haven't had a drink. So now I'm asking all these girls out on coffee dates. So then you actually have to have a personality. It's really quite hard. Yeah. You can't just rely on alcohol getting you through the nah. thing. Yeah. Uh, my advice is maybe do, um, I'm not sure if they do it at the moment, but like the, uh, the Botanical Gardens movie. 
Yeah, how good are That's they? That's a good one. And yeah. you just get to romantically see all the bats fly over at yeah. night. So yeah. cute. Hopefully you don't get shit on. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say you do that boat down the Yarrow until some kid throws Whoa. fucking milk, milk on you. Milk? That was wild. That's another story. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get into dating uh, advice because people yeah. need our dating advice because I don't know Because we're all single. Yep. Yeah, 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 <laughs> this one's from Nikki MB. Yeah. Uh, what are some conversations, uh, topics to avoid? What the... Um, if you have a rash, Ooh, gone. Yeah, I probably would say health stuff is probably number one. Uh, I don't know though. I think X, uh, maybe politics is up there. Yeah. Um, no, nah, but you. I don't know. If you want to get some politics out, just to be like. But everyone just goes, "Oh, what do you think of Trump?" And I'm like, "Oh gosh, this is real, just ugh, territory." Yeah, but if you said, "Oh, I love him," like it's at least a, it's good vetting for them pretty quick. <laughs> if it's a bad start, maybe I just go, man, I love Trump. Oh. I'll, I'll end the date pretty quickly, yeah. I reckon. Yeah, um, I think all of that stuff, <laughs> steer clear of it. Keep it light. Keep it light. Yeah. Um, Politics, religion, um, ex-girlfriends, ex-relationships, and I don't know. Any explicit, like very detailed breakdowns of toilet habits? Yeah, that's a bit weird. I had one person get really mad at me because I mixed up John Farland, or John Farland and Jimmy Barnes. Uh, I think that kind of just <laughs> we're not Which too happy after that. In? Do you have to sit in one camp? Because I'm uh, very much Jimmy Barnes. They're essentially just the national treasures of Australia, yeah. Australian music, I'd say. Yeah. Um, well, John Farnham, I think, came to the Your after voice party. Try and understand it. That's that yeah, guy. He came to. He came to the Jimmy after Barnes party. Jimmy Barnes is like, uh, he's a working class man. <laughs> John Fartham. I met well, John Fartham was at our he, after party. The you've grand called him seven different things. You called him John Fartham, <laughs> Farnham, <laughs> Farham. He's <laughs> John Farnham. Anyway, let's move hey on. Guy, Johnny boy. <laughs> J, J, J Johnny man. boy. Uh, where the hell do you meet people these days, especially oh. when you've got a busy life? Just where do you meet man. them in general? I had this conversation with a friend of mine this week. Where I said, do you meet them before the apps? You know the ones mm. where you, you go to the supermarket and you put the bananas in your trolley and it's like – if you see someone with you, – you fold out the kid's seat, you put the banana in the kid's seat, and then that's meant to be like, oh, he's single, she's single, got the banana in the kid's seat. That used to be a thing. That's a thing. Well, it used to be back in the day before apps and phones and shit. A dating app, you put in what you want in a person, right? And yeah. that, that app tries to match you with someone there, right? So you reverse engineer that. You kind of say, okay, what do I want in a woman? And then you go and find the places and the events or in the are. community that that woman would exist in yeah. or that man or wherever it is. And I think that's the biggest thing. So if you're into like, you know, someone that's fit or into like working out and stuff, it's like go join a gym or go to like clubs, a run club. They yeah, seem run a club. One. Massive one. The run problem club. is if you like video games and Doritos, yeah. Can't really. Um, uh, yeah, that's going to be tough, not right? There's not a lot of. Oh, who knows, man? I reckon there'll probably be Internet some females cafe. out there. Internet cafe. Well, they got to get out of the house at some point. So yeah. maybe social media. Who knows? Yeah, there's. I don't know. People can. People are very good at stalking nowadays. Yeah, yeah. If you like movies, just stand outside the cinema, and just. Ask him how the movie. Are you going? Are you going to theater three? <laughs> oh, weird. So am I. <laughs> Can I sit next to you? <laughs> no. Oh, you're uh, seat twenty four. I'm at twenty five. Now this is a good one because yep. practical. Dan Walker. How many sprays of cologne is too much? Ooh. See, I think on his question he wrote colon, and that really spun me because how much colon is too much? Colon. <laughs> difficult <laughs> question to answer. Too much. <laughs> Real um, difficult. And then much, if we have changed it how to cologne. How much do we know? Um, no, I think it's – don't you do like the spritz on the wrist, dab the wrist together, neck each side yeah. with the wrist, and then you do the spritz in the air and then you just like run through it. Yeah. You know, you walk Screaming. through it, right? Yeah. Um, I was told that Shane Warren had um, this – type of cologne I was gifted it and it was the Shane Warren stuff that he used to wear yeah. and that's what he used to do is he used to kind of uh, like, I thought he was a bit of like VB it. on the fingers dab behind <laughs> the ears type <laughs> operator that's what yeah I go I think maybe it depends on uh, I just want to say this Dan Walker maybe it just depends on how much you smell up front mm. if you want to cover that you probably don't want to cover that you know when you have the toilet spray yeah. and you've had a you've just blown <laughs> that thing <laughs> up and then you hit it with like you know four liters of uh, lavender spray, but then the lavender spray just sits on the shit <laughs> particles and then it smells like oh someone, you know, sprinkled lavender on a big shit. You don't want that type of setup. You just want, you know, I go one, two, rub together, behind the ear, behind the ear, and I don't really do the uh, walkthrough, but I can see how that works. Yeah. The le I think it's less is more. 
because you don't want it. You don't yeah. want to be overdoing it because if they notice they're overdoing it, you can't. It's just too potent. But what type of person do you want to be when you walk into a room? Do you want people to go, "Oh, that's nice." Nah, but I think if if you ever get close to a girl, you want her to smell that smell. That's why it's behind the ears. Mm. So when they come in for the hug, they got it behind the ears. Yeah, that's that's strategic. Or even I don't know what the risk they do is the, for. They do the awkward like, you know, the awkward like hug, kiss on the cheek thing, you know, yeah. that the Australians yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you get a little clone there and they smell that. Maybe your wrist is for the homies when you dap them up. They can <laughs> smell your wrist when you dap Oh, he's a good smell man. That's, that one's for the boys. Yeah. Uh, needs advice here for all the short people under six foot. Like, Ooh. how do they go about it? That's from our boy, Jakey. Yeah, what do you reckon, Braden? So they ain't me. Uh, I don't know. I um, actually gaffer tape milk crates to the bottom of my shoes. <laughs> 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 I actually don't know. I think you just got to step it up in the personality department. That's it. Unlike yep. Mason, mm. he can walk around like um, just plain cardboard. Yeah. I actually have to have a bit of wit and humor and stuff. Yeah. You have to have good dance moves too. I feel like you got good dance moves. You get people yeah. around you, like got big personality. Yeah. That's it. That gets you over the line. It's not great. I'm actually the tallest person in my house. <laughs> Oh, out, of, out of my three, me and my two other Not a revolving mates. door there, is I, it? So I reference everything as big. Like, oh, do you want me to get that for you? And stuff like that. And I'm like, I He's reckon like, I'm, yeah, big dog. Yeah, I reckon yeah, I, got big a, dog. I got like an inch on him. <laughs> and sometimes an inch makes a big difference, Mace. Uh, now, what's the male perspective <laughs> on women who were previously married with kids and maybe they got a dog as well? So Yeah, so a few commitments. Yeah, so yep. this one's a big. This one's big. It's serious. It is. It is a bit of a serious one. I think, man, it's all about communications. Communication. Mm. I think if you if you go in there and you you at least tell them that, right? Like at least they're aware of it because it's like there'd be no worse feeling connecting with someone five dates and they go in. You're like, oh, by the way, I've been kind of hiding this secret. Yeah. Um, I think you have to be pretty upfront with it, communicate it, and. Like I said, I think it's um, it's probably not the easiest thing to do. Mm. I'll say that. Um, I haven't had that experience, so I can't really speak on other people. But you have to put yourself out there at the same time. You know, you gotta you gotta find me uh, find people if you want to date. And I can imagine it wouldn't be the easiest thing ever. But I think communication is key, as they always say. And um, who knows? Maybe someone you know is looking to to have a family, but you know has never been able to start one. And that's what I think. It's you know you. You can't expect everyone to be fine with that situation, but at yeah. the same time, you find the person that is. Yeah. It's the same with the under six foot. If you're walking around, there's people that are refused there's to reasons. date. reasons. This is on your there's, resume at the dating yeah, app, this right? Is like, you have children, you're looking, height, you're looking star the, sign. The people that are okay <laughs> with it, and then they're your people. You know, you yeah. shouldn't have to work for it. Shouldn't have to convince them. Oh, he's yeah. a good kid. He's not like one of those shit kids. <laughs> he's a good like you, kid. you shouldn't have to convince uh, him. The dog's nice. Doesn't yeah. bark too much. Yes. <laughs> uh, we got to keep both. We can't get rid yeah. of one. Can't have everything though. Uh, but yeah, that's some good advice. I think we're pretty yeah. good at the advice stuff. We're nailing this. Uh, if you told someone you just want to be friends, now mm. yep. I haven't had this much. You've probably had it a bit. But uh, what's 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 the situation after that? Is it? Do you want to go? Oh, I, I think we're just more friends and then just mm. keep hanging around them or do you give them the space? I think like whenever someone says that and then you're not on the same page, it's a bit of a shock for one of the parties, yeah. right? And it's not a great feeling. It takes a lot of courage for the person. It does take a lot of courage. And whenever you have that courage, it's tough to build that back up sometimes to be able to say that again to someone. So yeah. like whenever you do that and you kind of break someone's heart in that sense of saying like, look, I'm just not interested in you that way. Yeah. Um. I think you got to give them a bit of space. Like let them, you know, it's kind of like whenever you break up with someone, right? Usually if the first month they hate you, the second month they're getting used to you without you, and the third month they're like, okay, whatever, like life goes on, we can be mates. Mm. It's a bit of time heals everything. Uh, give them a bit of space. But like I said before, communicate with it. Um, and I think sometimes like you need to probably take a step back from hanging out with someone as much if you like them and they're not on the same page as you Yeah. Um, in that sense. So I think there's, there's little things along the line that can help, but – that's a lot easier said than done. A lot I, easier than said than done. I think they say that that old saying: the worst that the worst thing she can say is no, until yeah. she like calls you bro. No, I think I'm good, bro. You reckon mate? <laughs> you reckon mate is worse than bro? Mate is oh, shocking. Thanks, mate. <laughs> like even if there's no romantic ties there, yeah. when a when a girl calls you mate, fuck. You're done. Fuck. You're done. Just bury just yourself. Bury, yeah. You get a shovel for Christmas. You just <laughs> chuck me under because I'm done. Now, this one's a very serious one. We've got a couple of serious ones. So yep. uh, twist and tape 
comes out with my chopper too small to smash my homies with. Uh, <laughs> any advice? <laughs> so I'm guessing Twist and Tape's got a little um yeah. A little he phallus? Like a, he sounds like a rapper. He's got a little he's, phallus. He's not making the old phallus team of the century. No, he's not making the old phallus team of the century, but yeah, okay. he wants to know, and I, I don't know, I can't really speak on this one, but maybe you could help him out. What's it? What's advice for people with a little phallus? How do they go about it? Have a great personality. <laughs> it's the same as the height. Oh, Good luck, man. mate. Good, Good luck. luck. That's it. Good uh, luck. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the answer, right? <laughs> Once you get... Once you get too far down a path you're in, anyway, that's it. <laughs> you can't change what you God given. Make her yeah. fall in love. That's the that's the thing. Now let's jump into Mason's personal life. Oh, this would be good <laughs> no, too. This oh. is just general questions for Mace, just to wrap things up. Uh, yeah. Do you have any embarrassing stories as a kid? Now, my personal favorite, going back mm. on the podcast, was the time that you. Uh, had a date organized and oh. you got your mum to drop you off at the cinemas to watch Chicago, Chicago. and your date pulled out and you just had to sit through Chicago by yourself. It was real depressing, like back left of the theater, like real just uh, the darkest spot oh. of the place just to try to so good. cry my uh, my sorrows. Um, yeah, that was that was definitely up there as one that of the worst days of my life. That 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 was, was so, so bad. And it got a run too in the media, which was just made it even yeah, worse. Yeah, they did write off articles about it. That's <laughs> the one thing I didn't like, tell you about. They did articles uh, on it. Jeez, that was bad. Um, but good for the pod. Good for the pod. <laughs> good for the pod. Come on, we need another one of those. Um, I will tell people this. I'm, I don't really tell too many people this, but um, I don't know when you started to learn how to ride a bike. Brayden, but yeah. I was a bit of a late bloomer in that. Oh, yeah. um, we used a... to have like a like a bike day at school, right? Mm. And this is throughout elementary school. And I used to bring a Razor scooter to it because I couldn't ride a bike. So this I was the only I... person out of like 200 people yeah. with a scooter because I was inability to ride a bike. And then whenever I was like 13 or 12 or 13, 14 years old, I was like, I need to figure this out. So I asked my brothers if they would help me. Yeah. And Typical brothers are like, I'll push you in the deep end. You can swim that way, right? Yeah. Um, so essentially next to our house, we had this hill that went down. He like sits there and he goes, all right, get on the bike, just go. And I was like, all right, cool, sounds good. And he's like, the quicker you go, the easier it is to stay on. I was like, that's valid information. Yeah, very good. Physics. This is very good teaching. <laughs> and I got on there and I'm sitting there and like the hill is pretty steep and we get going and we get going. I'm like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And then I realized like, I'm sitting there, and you know some bikes, if you, like, reverse pedal, it breaks? Yeah. I thought this bike was that. Oh, nice. It was not. So I start reverse pedaling, and I'm going in, like, 20 circles a, like, you know, a second, trying to get this bike to stop, not knowing that there is squeeze brakes on the front. Mm. And at one point, I essentially just had to ditch the bike. So I kind of, like, wobbled off the thing hit a mailbox, <laughs> flipped the bike into a ditch. And I had, to, I think I still have the scar. It goes from like the bottom of my left hip up to like the middle of my chest Jesus. where the the mailbox essentially ripped me in half. And my mom comes home to me like covered in blood and was like, Nolan, what the fuck <laughs> did you do to Mason? He's like, I'm just trying to teach him how to ride a bike. He's hey. too stupid not to know the brakes. Someone's got to <laughs> teach him how to ride. <laughs> and from then on, I just... Don't really like bikes. Well, well you're back am, on bikes. Then. I am back on bikes. I'm on the Lycra gang. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't either, but it's it's not a good look. That's a red flag, I'd say, if you show up to a date in Lycra. It's not no, it's not attractive. I don't care if you're Brad Pitt. No. You ain't going to look good in Lycra. It's an ick for sure. It's a huge ick. <laughs> it's a huge ick. Well, I refuse we both have to see, let people see me in bike it. Bike crash stories. Why didn't you bring up your bike crash story when I was talking about mine? Well, whenever you busted your nut in the bike crash, <laughs> yeah, um, the so that was freaking stuff. wild. Had to go to hospital. That was insane. Um, I totally forgot about it until now. Yeah. Well, yeah. there you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> that's good. That's things we learned today. Mason, not good on a bike. Things we, now, this one's an interesting one. Rosemary yep. and Duffy wants to know, do you think Bigfoot is a single being mm. or are there multiple Bigfoot? You know, the, Are there multiple the, big feet? Like the Sasquatch Bigfoot. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, like, do you think there's only one over time? Like Loch Ness. You know, the Loch Ness monster, there's probably, there's probably only one, right? Loch Ness monster. But the thing is, how they reproduce if there's only one? Just alien. Nah, there's got to be There's got to be at least two. There's got to be a Sasquatch family out there. It's just a hairy bloke. Um, I, I think it is, actually. I think it's just one massive hairy guy, and then he just kind of goes in the woods every just once in a while. Yeah. No, I think there's more than one. I think there's more than one. I think it's true. I think Sasquatch is a real thing. What's the plural of Sasquatch? Sasquatch. 
the Sasquatch. <laughs> the uh, Sasquatchian family. The Sasquatchians. Uh, what's the biggest culture shock moving to Australia? Man, one thing I'll say in the first week I was here, I remember I was sitting at the, um, I think it's the Pullman down by the MCG, and I not even didn't have a place to stay at this point. Fancy. Like, you didn't know anything. Pullman? Didn't have literally any cash to spend. I couldn't like leave the hotel. The AFL wouldn't pay me. It was a whole thing, right? A big debacle. And I remember I was like, okay, I've got like seventy five dollars and like forty two cents to my name, or something like that. And I was like, okay, I want. I'm hungry, mm -hmm. and it was late. And I was like, oh. What's the one establishment that I recognize in Australia? And it was Domino's. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll order a Domino's pizza. Um, no offense to Domino's, and I hope they never sponsor this podcast. It's probably a very unlikely after this comment. I but mean, we hope they do. Domino's tastes very different in Australia. Yeah. It has got like herbs and spices and stuff in the dough in America where it tastes uh, like very different. Yeah. And then they like sometimes have that marinara dip where you can get like the bread on the outside and like dip it in marinara and eat it. Whereas like, here it was like a lot smaller portions. I think there was like hot dogs chopped up on it. So do they like, try in just, America with Domino's? They try. Like yeah. Domino's is something I would actually order in America. Here is like the cheapest pizza. You get the $5 is, pizza, you can't expect much. Yeah, exactly. And I, I didn't know that because I didn't know that there was a bigger price difference between things in America and so Australia. So you walked in with your $7 and then you're like, we're pissed off with the quality you got for 7 bucks. Well, it also was like cold by the time it got to me. And like, if you ever had a cold pizza of Domino's, it's not something you go home raving about. My housemate was a big fan of Domino's. He used to smash it every night. Really? Yeah, I loved it. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah, it was, that was a big culture shock for me. Domino's is not the same. Yeah. Nor is KFC. Well, KFC is a lot better though. I went to the States. There was this real weird culture thing where like they could just shoot you at any time. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. People they, just had guns. They got guns. Anywhere and, and everywhere. Stuff. You know this one? I was like, there was this guy, we we're in New York and he's like honking the horn. Yeah. And I just turned around. I was like, mate, we get it. And he drove flat out at me, drove up onto the footpath and just started getting out of the car. And I just ran because I was like, <laughs> can you have guns here? In my head, that's all I was like, yep. can you have guns here? Can you have guns here? And I was running down the street, and uh, I was with my girlfriend at the time, and the hey. guy goes, your man's a bitch, and then gets back in the car and drives off. I was wow. Like, well, I was like, yeah, well, what in fairness, this? New York. New York. I was like, in fairness, yeah, I can see that. Like, I yeah. do look like a fair bitch, but <laughs> I'd rather not get shot. Yeah. And I couldn't do the math on the fly, what state we're in, gun laws, I don't know. Yeah, New York, I think you'd be fine. I was hoping, you know, the you need the hero with the gun and then he fires back and then well that's why guns are legal because yeah, exactly. you have to have a gun to stop the guy with a gun that's exactly. the bad guy right? exactly so I was backing there's in there's only one thing that fixes guns and that's more guns more guns <laughs> which is where I, you know that's the culture shock I just didn't have enough guns uh, I didn't have any guns hey, I don't know how they let me in people don't kill people guns kill people <laughs> yeah, that's right uh, yeah <laughs> so they say over there uh, yeah and too much um, yeah. too much potato that's the second thing so pretty much the same. Too much potato. Too much potato. When you go, I like the black coffee in the breakfast. Yeah. That, what do they call that? Percolated shit or whatever? Yeah, okay. Where you just keep having it? Yeah. I, I was all for that because it's just weak coffee. Yeah, yeah. But then it's like you get the, gr what's grits? What's that? Oh, grits, man. Is that potato? Yeah. Um, I'm not 100% sure And then they sure had like the hash brown. And then hash that, brown's epic. And then yeah. they had like the, it's just like shaved potato deep fried. It's like, I've. Just one. Thanks. Everything's fried. Yeah. That's essentially the America. In, yeah. In New York, there's all the Melbourne-based cafes, and they were fucking mint. Yeah. They were mint. 100%. Australian cafes are killing it They're over there. They're very good. Um, and oh, there's a couple left. Uh, what's your hobby outside of footy uh, and the podcast, obviously? I did mention I'm into the bike gang. Now, the uh, the old bike gang, I've done a few laps around Albert Park. Are you good? What's the what's the goal? Well, I got a massive bike. The problem was I couldn't get anything to fit me for ages. Um, and then once I got the bike – then you kind of, it's like golf, right? And I'm trying to get into golf too. It's an old man thing and it's a sign I'm aging because no one at 18 is like, hey, I'm into golf and biking. Mm. Never hear that on a dating profile. Um, but is golfing, or is, it, um, is riding a bike a red flag? The Lycra is. The Lycra is, a, you never want to be filmed in Lycra. Yeah. Like if people ask for a photo with me if I'm at the cafe after the, the bike ride, I just say no. Do you have to cover up? I say up. just a selfie. I'll take it from just take it from like the head up. Do you have to cover up Junior when you're standing there? Surely it's Cover just, up Junior. Like it's just Usually you try to take there. it sitting down so you don't see the full yeah. kitten caboodle. Yeah. 
Yeah, that can't be great. The bacon and bits. <laughs> the bacon and Mason Jr. I was thinking. <laughs> it's very, it's very sucked in there and just. Yeah. Well, it normally it goes down a, one leg when it's you know, when you're in the lycra. Yeah, it's a, gotta, it's a whole thing, man. Because it's not it like there. it's yeah, it's the seat's hard. Then you don't want like you have to kind of no, nah, it's just too much. It's yeah. not great. It's not a great feeling, but yeah. it is good fun to go on a bike and go around and do a bit of like a. I'm not going to say what day I do it, but I do it almost every morning so people yeah. are going to start trying to find me. I like the scooters. Um, I've been humming around on those. Um, the Lime scooters. The Lime scooters. Very unsafe, but yes. They're fun, though. They are good fun. I want to get one of them to just cruise In around. New York, the bikes, they go like yeah, twice as fast good. as the bikes here. The yeah, Lime I felt bikes. ripped off on the bike wild. here because I didn't know you had to pedal at all. I'm like, what am I paying for? What do you mean? You have to pedal and it just assists your pedaling. I just want to you just go. thought there's a switch. Yeah, you I want to like a there. motorbike. <laughs> then what the fuck's the point of the pedals? <laughs> exactly. Take them off. Don't need them. Take them off. That's what I was getting to. Okay, all right. Uh, yep. Now, this is the last one because I put it there because I want to try to get it out of here and I yep. don't think we'll get it. What's this? Uh, but we all know that you make a carrot cake mm, and it's money. this special carrot cake that apparently it's it's the shit. Yeah. Uh, so people want to know where can we get the carrot cake recipe? I'll tell you where you can get the carrot cake. Go to Poppy's Cafe in Anglesey. That's what makes the carrot cake, and that's where I got the recipe from. I refuse to share the recipe. So how did you get the recipe? The owners are friends of mine, and it's their grandmother's recipe. It's very good. So you must be like family. Um, yeah, well, the god, so one of the people that kind of helps run the place is the godmother to my godson. Oh, wow. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so she's a good friend of mine. She gave me the recipe, and it's actually pretty easy too, which makes it awesome to try to impress people. Two best things I can do, and probably the things I would put on a dating profile, yeah. is I make a mean carrot cake, and I can give you American citizenship. <laughs> That's the two best things about That's me. That's pretty good. I've That's actually it. reached out to girls that, uh, on there with the, I'm from fucking, you know, New York or whatever. Yeah. Really try to angle for those ones. I want that. I want to get into New York. You want to get into New York? Yeah. Okay. If they're like, I'm from the South or whatever. The deep South. Pass. <laughs> I couldn't have someone speaking at me that slow. I'm too impatient. That'd be like, I could that, yeah. hurry up, get through your sentence. You don't want a Southern Belle? Nah. Like, oh, you don't want man. no Southern Belle? There's a girl on TikTok that's a Southern Belle, and yeah. boy, it's painstaking Painful. to listen to. <laughs> she she just walks around her house saying stuff that's in her house. Oh, gosh. Um, And it's, oh, man. I watch it just for the torture. It's kind of like the sorority girls. You ever see those yeah, sorority girls those things? Are, They're like, Wait. It's full mob mentality. <laughs> and the energy's just fucking blowing mm. the top of their head off. I'm from Tennessee. No, no. Go Roll Tide. <laughs> roll Tide. Like, roll Tide, Alabama. Alabama. Simmer down. Anyway, oh, I shit. think that's all we've got for the uh, fan questions, which is yes. pretty awesome. Massive thank you to everyone for putting in some stuff. It was cool to be able to give back. We talk about it all the time. This is a community. We want to give back. We want to connect with the people that listen to this. We want to say a massive thank you to everyone that answered the questions, put them in. We didn't get to all of them, but hopefully we got to – to most people, um, and yeah, thank you. It's always great to be able to to be able to answer the questions y'all have because we sometimes just go on rants and shit, and then you know sometimes we have to be reeled into what our uh, our people want and want to hear. I reckon we'll do a few of these over the course of the season. Mm. Uh, there is plenty of YouTube comments, which I've said two weeks in a row that I'm getting to, but I am Yay. getting to them. I'm reading them. Yeah, uh, I'm just not getting back to them. Which is now you understand my dating app uh, habits. Yep, uh, I read them and I'll go. I'll reply to that later, and then. <laughs> I'm still single. So, um, but there is a lot of Americans that um, uh, watch us on YouTube. Oh, huge which is shout great. Out to them. But yeah. one thing that's even better, I read yep. a comment. Someone on our YouTube is 70, watches us. 70 years old. Yeah, watches all- Shout out to that person. Is. Hey, thanks, homie. <laughs> that's so cool. You're the best. That's so cool. Anyway. Um, so after this, you're going to have to click that big X in the top <laughs> left. <laughs> Doing well. Uh, se- oh. I don't even feel like 70 is not even. 70's 70, not even 70's like, like old, 30 now. That. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, modern medicine. How, no. how old do you reckon we'll live? 120. Yeah, not me. Um. <laughs> I reckon I'll get to maybe 80. Tall people die young. Yeah. And then but I'm, live better lives. I'm just too irresponsible. So <laughs> I reckon we'll, I reckon 80 is a good knock. 80 is a good knock. Just pull the plug after that. But you used to get a, uh, used to get a uh, note from the queen. That's what. 100? Yeah. But you wouldn't have got it because you're only American. Now, now she's dead, so. Yeah, Does the king do it? He'll be dead too. Whoever the next one is, we'll get a note Kate from that and, person. Kate and the other guy. Yeah, that'd be William. sick. William and Kate. Yeah, if I got a Great note from the um the chick off Suits, sick. What? You know the the girl from Suits oh, married Meghan Markle. That guy. 
Yeah. Yeah. The other guy. Well, we're the really head. losing our connection to we the are. Royals. Yeah, 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 the Royals are just... Anyway, we got to wrap things up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening in. As always, a massive thank you for everyone that participated in the questions on social media. Give us a follow and everything else. Tell your friends. And we're all about the community, like I said before. We're all about answering and making you guys entertain. That's the whole reason we're doing this. We want to entertain you. So a massive thank you for being involved in the podcast. And um, it's going to be an epic week. we got first preseason practice match yeah. this week on Wednesday. Against the bitter rivals, uh, North Melbourne. Against the North Melbourne kangaroos. Yeah, I think uh, that's flattering. If you call them bitter rivals, that means they're relevant. Jeez, Brayden, that is just disrespectful. One thing I do want to say, I want to shout out Harrow on the decks. Yes. He's uh, in the control room back there in the lab. So uh, every switch that you saw is mm. from him. I don't have to do it all in post anymore. There you go. He's going to have an early night tonight. Um, but, yeah, it's been a massive, massive week. It's going to be a massive week coming up. Then we've got the Richmond. Then we've got GWS. It is some exciting stuff, but it is good to get this one done with all the fans' questions, be able to kind of connect back with everyone there. And um, it's going to be an exciting week ahead. So make sure you listen in next week. We're going to divulge into everything that happens oh, in the we're AFL. Talking footy. We're going to get back into the footy. We're going to really have this ramp up over the next few weeks. That's for sure. But without further ado, massive thank you to Brayden, everyone else that's involved now. And um, it's going to be a good, good week ahead. So make sure you listen in to next week. And a massive thank you for being involved. All the best. Have a great day. Peace. Yeah.